Hello, and welcome to Forever Tootie. You know, I've always taken pride in the fact that we rarely go out to eat dinner at a restaurant because I actually like cooking for my family. It's much healthier and the food is much better. So I always found that whenever you go out to eat at those establishments, you end up spending way too much money. So what I'd like to do for you today is to share with you um, how I prepare an inexpensive meal for my family uh, that will cost under $20. Okay, so the first thing you should keep in mind in selecting your meals for your family is to keep in mind what they like, what you like, and what's healthy for you. Um, so I've decided to do jambalaya pasta. Also, what can help you to get ideas on what to cook is just to look at your local sales ads. I did look at mine. This is Winn-Dixie. Now, Winn-Dixie's prices aren't as low as Walmart prices, but it gave me an idea of what I might, how much I might spend on the items when I um, make my decision. So I decided to go with jambalaya pasta because it's what my family likes. But it's also because I looked at um, the price of the Manda Smo sausage at Winn Dixie, and it was actually a, a dollar cheaper than it usually is. But I also know that Walmart has it cheaper, so I looked at that. Also, um, the pasta at Winn Dixie was a dollar. Actually, it was buy one get one free. So that helped me to make my decision. So when I went to Walmart, I did pick up. Um, this bread and it's pre-sliced that's what i like about it it's very convenient and it's only a dollar for this french bread um, i also picked up the manda smoke sausage which i got 80 cents cheaper at walmart i, I didn't have um, another bell pepper and onion so i needed to get that i usually get those from sam's um i already had a garlic um garlic so i just i didn't have to purchase that um beef broth and this is the 48 ounce beef broth the rotini pasta and peas and carrots because i like to add that to my jambalaya sometimes uh, the pasta to give it a little bit more body so all together all together i spent 19 dollars and 32 cents you also want to prepare by boiling your water for your pasta and I always add salt and olive oil into the water so the pasta doesn't stick and that it could have a little flavor added to it while it's cooking. So I've prepped my seasoning. I've chopped up a half of an onion and an entire bell pepper. Then I want to add some basil to it and a couple bay leaves as well eventually. And then this is my Manda smoked sausage. What I did was I chopped up the entire pack of smoked sausage, but I'm only going to use half. So technically, I've only spent $4.08 or $0.09 cents on the meal for the meat portion. Okay, so I've added about a fourth of a cup of oil, this is olive oil, to the pan. And now I'm going to add my smoked sausage to it. It's important that you brown your smoked sausage. So I have browned my smoked sausage. I like my smoked sausage to be browned. It gives it more color and more flavor. And I also like the fact that um, it allows me to use, to infuse my oil. Oh, this smells so good. Now I'm gonna sprinkle about two tablespoons of flour into the pot. And this is gonna make my roux. Around. Now note that I am making 
making a very light roux simply because this is a pasta dish. And with the pasta dish, you already have so much, so much starch in it, so it's going to thicken it anyway. So what's happening is that the flour is actually browning on the veggies. You don't want to overcook it because you don't want it to burn. Definitely want sausage you want to add the remaining broth just to cover everything so you, all together you have added 48 ounces of beef broth Okay, so to the liquids, you want to add a tablespoon and a half of seasonal, one tablespoon of the garlic, granulated garlic, and a half a tablespoon of black pepper. I've already added the seasonal, so I'm just gonna sprinkle in the granulated garlic. So I'd say about a half a tablespoon of pepper. I'm just going to squeeze that in. That's how I normally do it anyway. Um, I also like to add a tablespoon of basil and three bay leaves. I will also add a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne. There's definitely something about the combination of bay leaves and beet, oh my goodness, along with basil. So what I've done is I've added about four bay leaves to the mixture and I'm allowing it to boil. What I'll do is I'll place a lid on top of this pot and then turn it down to low and let it simmer under pressure for approximately 20 minutes. So now that it's simmering, I'll work on the garlic bread. Okay, so I'm about to add the peas and carrots to the pasta, so I'm cooking it on the side. Okay, to prepare for the garlic bread, you want to roast your garlic. So we'll drizzle some olive oil. It's a big drizzle, it's okay. Um, onto garlic. Of course, I cut the top of the garlic off. Want to pinch a little salt on there and some black pepper. And then I'm going to cover it up and put it in the oven and roast it for about 10 minutes. The garlic bread. So I've lined the pan with some parchment paper and placed the bread on the pan. This pre sliced French bread comes in handy cuts out some time. Have some butter and my garlic. So what I'm going to do is break open this garlic, pinch it in, pinch it out of its little casing, and I'm going to melt this butter. Okay, so I'm just taking some of the cloves out or apart and just squeezing them into the butter. So this is one head of garlic and one is good enough, it's plenty enough. Okay, so now that it's all in there, you want to smash up the garlic inside of the butter. Mix it up really well. You want to add a pinch of salt.
some black pepper. I guess that will be about a quarter of a teaspoon and some parsley. Mm. That's about a teaspoon of parsley as well. Since my children do not eat cheese, I will not add any Parmesan to this. I'll just mix it up and then use a basting brush to baste the bread. Okay, so now just want to baste each slice. Just kind of swooping up a little bit of the garlic. Okay, you want to flip your bread over and baste it on the other side as well. Now into the oven for about two and a half minutes. Okay, after 20 minutes, remove the lid and turn your heat up to high so that it can simmer at a more rapid pace in order to thicken. This is as thick as I need it to be right now because at this consistency, it will coat the pasta well as well. Okay, so now I wanna add the pasta to the sauce. And then once I add the pasta, turn it off, turn off the heat because the pasta doesn't need to really cook anymore. And what I've done, right before I added the pasta, I didn't show you guys, but I added some fresh basil to it. Now I'm just gonna stir this up really well. And just let it sit for a few minutes. And this is the finished pasta and the finished garlic bread and peas and carrots. How does it taste? 